uh, there's too many victims that suffered, not only from our community. It's, it's a loss, uh, a major, major loss. It's like night and day. The community notices guy missing. You know, he's an active in hockey and cultural, helping the youth. He's a, a great kid, and him not being there, it's a totally, total loss. Uh, the younger ones are still waiting for their father to come home. He went playing hockey last and didn't come home. They haven't been told yet of the loss. It's, it's hard, it's too tragic for them to deal with. It's, uh, any tragedy is hard to deal with. And they're too young to deal with that. It's just going to cause more trauma for them, which isn't good at that age. Well, uh, the toll is taken on the community is like what the judge said earlier, and I don't know how many times we have to repeat it, but drunk driving is the worst crime ever. And it's more and more advertised in our community. Don't drink and drive. Don't be drinking. Don't drive. You know, that has, I guess, woken up some people, but it's still happening today. It's still happening. It'll always happen. Uh, well, we were seeking eight to ten years, so we certainly got the lower end. Uh, how it was apportioned um, was uh, perhaps not what we wanted, but in the end result, it still falls within the range that we were seeking. I think the message still goes out to the community that yeah, the sentences are going up. Um, we are sending a, a message of denunciation to the community. We're not going to tolerate this anymore. Uh, this is a case, one of the only two cases in Edmonton where we've proceeded with charges of manslaughter. And I anticipate that uh, we'll be looking at those type of charges further down the line, especially in light of some of the comments that the court made about there's simply no excuse in this day and age. If you drink and drive and you kill someone, you're going to get a significant sentence and we're going to start looking at manslaughter sentences for them.